Hi loves, welcome to Ask a Little Witch. My name is Kerry and this is the May 2019 Pick a Card reading. Um, if you are new to my channel, I do take um, you know recommendations for future Pick a Card readings. You can either leave them in the comments down below the video or you can head over to the community tab that can be found on my YouTube channel and you can comment there for me as well. Um, as always, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let's jump into the video. So if you're new with pick a card readings, I recommend that you really, well, first off, pause the video, really uh, center yourself, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and all of that jazz. And then when you open your eyes, the card pile that calls to you is gonna be the pile that's meant for you. There's meant to be a message that's within that pile that you need to hear for the month of May. So without further ado, timestamps can be found in the information box just below the video as can all relevant, you know, links and how to get in contact with me and um, anything that you need to know in regards to the video can be and will be found in the information box below. So be sure to pop that open and then jump ahead to your message. So let's get into what this month has in store for you. Okay, so if you picked group number one, group number one, we have the fox. So the fox is like, I guess you could say your spirit, your spiritual like totem for the month of May. And whenever I think of foxes, I mean, they are so majestic, like they truly are majestic creatures. Um, I mean, the card actually reads, think on your feet. Okay, but it doesn't have to be about thinking on your feet. Okay, when I think of the fox, I think of, you know, going to work, heading to work, making something work for you, you know, and when we think of the fox, they, they do tend to, you know, work unusual hours, let's just say, you can't really see them roaming about during the day, they're nighttime creatures, they usually come out, you know, when, when, when they're kind of less seen, less visible, I mean, what I would say with the fact that we have the fox coming through for you guys, is that don't think that because you're doing something incognito that you're not going to get caught or you're not going to get seen okay i feel like you know there's i mean they are bright red bright orange okay this is root chakra stuff this is you know the chakra chakra this is about you following your instincts your hunches you know that that gut instinct you need to follow that when it comes to all matters um, but usually when the fox comes up, it can very well correlate with work or stuff to do with things that you do on, on an everyday basis. Now, foxes also have that connotation about being sly or being sneaky or being cunning. So it doesn't have to be necessarily that, you know, you're sneaking around. It could also be that you you might observe certain things that are not quite up to your ethics or your your standards or your values okay and so there is a choice here there's a choice when it comes to the fox okay um and this choice will have to be not just about you but also about perhaps even like your relationships and the reason why i'm saying relationships as well is because we have the pay attention to the red flag over here this is the the romance card that was pulled for you and it's just about kind of being observant, being observant to the facts and the gut instincts. Now, I feel like the theme of the month is actually the death card and don't feel like scared of this card. You know, this card is not, and I promise you it is not the most scariest tarot card in the entire deck, like it's really not. And the death card really does just represent a sense of change, okay? I feel like the theme of of this this next month especially if we think about it in terms of the fact that we have pluto retrograde we have saturn retrograde we have jupiter retrograde right we have all of this retrograde stuff kind of going on and so what happens when more specifically pluto because pluto is the is i guess the planetary ruler of the death card in in some ways okay um it's going to bring things it's I mean, the word that I get when I look at this is resurrection, you know, and it can be a good thing. It can be about second chances, you know, old opportunities resurfacing for you over the course of this next month. But the theme of the entire month of May is centered around this death card. It's about doing something differently. You know, something has to end. Something has to be 
changed. You can't continue on doing what you're doing, okay? And I feel like the um, the focus is this card, okay? Because the guy is kind of heading towards this. And so this card here, the, um, the Eight of Wands, the Eight of Wands is definitely a card that is about, you know, um, following your your goals, your ambitions, your dreams. Whenever, whenever this card comes up, I always, you know, what I see clairvoyantly in my mind's eye is Artemis, you know, Artemis, Diana, whichever, you know, god or goddess you want to kind of refer to. I always get that image when this card comes up. And I feel like it's almost like she's kind of drawing her her mystical bow and arrow back. And the thing is with Artemis, okay, or with any huntress, okay, is that she doesn't miss her mark. She just doesn't miss, okay? And it's kind of like when it comes to like shooting, you know, with a bow and arrow. I mean, I'm not a hunter or anything like that, but you know, you have to anticipate. You have to anticipate where the the goal the target is you have to anticipate that when you're drawing your bow and arrow and when you're shooting it off out into you know whatever it is that you want to acquire attain achieve for this next month you have to anticipate and i feel like with this being an eight this card also kind of has that you know transformational vibe to it as well okay and even this card another eight there's a lot of freaking change happening for you guys, okay? If you selected this option, there's going to be a lot of change. And so with this one here, it is about anticipating where, what is it that you want? First and foremost, what is it that you're aiming for? What are your goals? What are your ambitions right here, right now? And does your current lifestyle, does your current habits and, you know, routines, do they enable you to reach this target? Now, of course, the goal is always going to be moving. You know, it's like when someone's trying to lose weight, for example, they they get to their goal weight and then they want to kind of lose a little bit more and then a little bit more. You know, it, it, the, the goal, the result, it's always going to be shifting and moving and it's just about anticipating that. And I feel like with this card here, you might not be able to see, okay, you might not be able to see how any of this is going to be possible. You might not be able to see, you might be thinking, yeah, whatever, like I can't, I can't achieve that or I can't do that. You can you can this is a great card to get it shows movement okay and i feel like that is what this month is about for you it is about movement and even when i'm filming this like honestly my heart just it's pulsating like i'm finding it really hard to breathe guaranteed when i stop recording i won't have that issue so it is about slowing down it's about slowing down and doing what you can do you haven't got to get there right here right now it's just about making small adjustments small changes the point is you can't carry on the way that you're going on the death card is like a big sign that says stop this is going to change this is going to end you can't do anything about it it's one of the four horsemen okay you can't change that you can't do anything but this change or this ending or this death okay in the background i don't know if you can see but there is this kind of like this it's kind of like the sun is kind of shining outwards so it's kind of like whatever it is that's changing now is for your greater benefit it is for your greater good it is going to help you get to where it is that you want to get to but you can't keep doing what it is that you're doing okay and with the moon card and this card here this i mean whenever this card comes up it always indicates something official like a documentation and it could be an email it doesn't have to be a, a physical piece of paper but it is something that is official you know and with the moon the moon card could be something that comes every once a month it could be something that you do once a month it could be maybe this is even about um contracts agreements things that you've agreed to maybe there's some sort of something's coming back up for review something's coming back up for you to kind of think about think about before you sign on the dotted line you know there could be changes that are happening in regards to contracts agreements promises but this card up here is saying pay attention to the red flags so because this card and in all of the options this card is always going to be representational of love and romance okay if your partner your significant other is getting you to sign or promise something that you aren't quite into 
don't sign it, don't do it, don't do it, just don't do it. It's not going to be for your betterment. If anything, it's going to prohibit you from making these said changes that's going to lead you to where you actually want to be, okay? And if you don't, then you could end up like this, feeling trapped and confined and restricted as if you can't get to what it is that you actually want. If anything, this card is about kind of, yes, in some ways, finding that loophole, finding your way out of a situation that you might not want to be in. But in other ways as well, it is just about thinking, think of, I mean, this is a hard working creature, okay? The fox spirit is hard working. It does what it has to do to survive. And I know many people might say that they're really aggressive. I have seen so many foxes. I have stroke foxes, wild foxes, and they never once try to bite me or eat me. Most of the time they just scurry away, you know. So I don't feel like these are evil, out to get you creatures, but they are creatures that make you stop. They make you stop. They're red, they're orange. They're gonna like captivate you, okay? And so there is a warning here. There's a warning with whatever it is that you're about to sign or agree to. Again, this is something official. This is something tying you up, okay? It's something that you won't be easily be able to get out of, but it is something that might come around in, in a cycle. So if you're thinking about, I don't know, doing some sort of, you know, payment plan for something, I would say hang on a little bit you know, hang on a little bit, especially if you're having a long-term commitment with someone that you actually don't see yourself being with at all, maybe the, for that time period, don't sign it, don't do it, because it's going to prohibit you from the dream, the goal, whatever it is that you want to do. So it is almost, I feel like, if you selected this option, there is a lot of kind of, um, you know, being, being, stepping into your instinctualness, that's not even a word but you know being very intuitive trusting your instincts when it comes to things because you're having to kind of guess where the goal is where the target is going to be if you're going to meet your mark but whatever changes happen know that the changes have to happen and these are good changes that are aligning you with your your greater goal your greater vision so thank you so much for listening to me ramble um hopefully this has been insightful if you would like a personal reading, feel free to check out my services. Links are in the information box below and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hi guys. So if you selected group number two, then we have the spider. Now the spider is one of my most favorite kind of totem animals to come through because it's so like genius. I mean, it's genius, right? And the card reads, make your dreams real. Now, many people are scared of the spider, which is why it has symbolism as being kind of like the outsider of the animal kingdom, right? People fear it, people run from it. And yet it's this itty bitty thing. You know, if you think about spiders, like they're so much smaller and yet people will freak out a hell of a lot more over, let's say, spiders than they will do, I don't know, raccoons or something like that right? Um, so the spider does say, make your dreams real. This is you doing the work, okay? The spider doesn't have help from anybody else, okay? But itself, its instincts, its intuition, you know, it has this creative art, this creative talent, this creative potential to manifest its dreams, its life, whatever it wants to do, right? It can literally make webs and its web can be a work of art. Its web can be its home. Its web can be its mode of transportation, right? Its web can catch it from when it falls, but it's all coming from within. It's all coming from you, the spider, right? And I feel like with the spider spirit coming through for you guys, it can be a time of change, okay? Because spiders are known for their sense of, you know, transformation. They never stay in one place for very, very long. You know, they're always on the move. They're always moving forward, you know, heading off in the direction of what's next, okay? And usually when spiders come up, they do kind of have this message of you being the writer of your own destiny, you spinning the web of your own destiny, okay? Um, they do come through a lot for Virgos. Virgos seem to attract a lot of spider energy. And that's because, you know, Virgo is, I guess in some ways, the writer, you know, it's very much about the little itty bitty details. It's very intricate, 
you know, when you look at a spider's web and what it can do, it's intricate. It has so many bloody eyeballs, right? It has so many eyeballs. It sees everything. It observes everything. And so I feel like the month of May for you is about being observant, being observant. Now, it can also be about the web, right? It can be about making connections, making new friendships. And the reason why I'm saying that is all of the tarot cards that we've pulled for you are all people cards, okay? There is no undercurrent here. It's all people. Now, the focus of the month, I guess you could say, or the theme of the month is everything to do with what it is that you're trying to create, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest for yourself, okay? And so I feel like there is going to be an opportunity for you to achieve something, something that you've been wanting, especially because we have the, um, the star card here, okay? And the star card is a card of wishes, especially in terms of like, gypsy fortune telling okay this is a wish card it is a fulfillment card it's a grand opportunity that you're being given and the fox is looking straight at that now as i said foxes do come up usually in regards to work especially if you have a paid salary this this card will always come up and i feel like you're being seen okay and i always point this out there's a little rooster in the background of this and it's almost like, what do you call them? A whistleblower, right? It can crock a doo doo at any time it sees fit. It's watching you, it's observing you, okay? And so you do have a lot of um, a lot of people watching what it is that you're doing, watching what it is that you're trying to cultivate. And knowing that any hard work, anything that you've been, you know, working towards or building up towards, that's that's very positive for you. And I also always see when the fox comes up with a, a good card like this card, it can almost be seen as finding a way out of a bad situation, being able to find that loophole, that escape from something. But going back to these cards, so yeah, this is the theme. The theme is about what it is that you're trying to manifest for yourself in your life. And this card to me is looking directly over here. Everything is looking this way everything except for like Mr. Pentacles up here okay but everything else is all looking that way you know you've got the fox looking that way the attractions looking that way you know everything is looking that way and when things look to the left you could almost say that there is perhaps an old opportunity okay and spiders for me are kind of I mean if I think about spiders you know what zodiac sign scares people the most what zodiac sign can freak the crap out of people the most and that would tend to be Scorpios <laughs> you know and Scorpios ruling planet is <coughs> excuse me is retrograde Pluto is retrograde okay and Pluto is gonna be retrograde for many many months um, up until I think October October of this year and it's gonna be retrograde so you're feeling his his power more intensely. And I mean, it happened last month, it happened in April, the, the latter end of April, okay? He went retrograde on the 24th, I wanna say. And so we're still under that influence. When a planet slows down and starts to shift gears, that's when things can really kind of bubble up to the surface because Pluto is everything I mean, Pluto is change and transformation, but it's also healing and it is our pain. It's everything that we bury and we suppress deep down within ourselves. And that repressed stuff can find its way of flying back out. Okay. Now, what I would say is that as the month kind of progresses a little bit more, that, that feeling is still going to be doing its work, but you might not notice it as much. Okay. So what this could also be is about maybe past opportunities could kind of resurface their way back up old projects that you haven't finished could come back up for you to be starting to work on okay all in alignment with making your dreams a reality okay because the king of pentacles is a money it's an investor you know the king of pentacles is the wise business person it's someone who no longer really needs to be in the office he has people to do that for him he's worked you know his whole life he's built up he has experience he's like the grandfather card right and so the approach here with this is about kind of 
focusing on the real value of things, the real value of what it is that you want. Okay, so I feel like a lot of this reading is actually very work focused, very much about your career, your dreams. Um, it's very much about, you know, what it is that you can, you know, grow and build for yourself, you know, because this is a very physical card. It's money, it's values, it's everything that is about security, right? But what you need to not forget is your relationships, the emotional side of things, because I do feel like there is an opportunity with the attraction card up here. The attraction card says you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. And it is just about being present, you know? Like I said, the spider spirit isn't really focused on the past. It's just in the moment. It doesn't stay still necessarily, you know? It doesn't stay still for very long at least. It's always on the go. It's always, you know, it's a sense of, you know, a cycle. You know, it's going through its motions. It's going through its cycle. And so with the attraction card coming up, don't neglect your, your your relationships with the Queen of Cups. Don't neglect this side of things, okay? Yes, there's lots of opportunities here for you to kind of get ahead. New opportunities to maybe make more money. New opportunities for you to be seen and to be recognised, of course. But what it is also saying is don't risk kind of becoming the more negative association with this, which is kind of like being an outsider, you know, making people scared of you. Not necessarily like actually literally scared of you, but, you know, spiders, people run, they, they fear them, they hate them, they scream, you know, it's, it's a real issue. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like, don't, kind of, kind of don't shut yourself out. Um, if anything, build your relationships, work your relationships, because relationships are the fastest way for you manifesting anything in this lifetime. So this is in, you know, generally what I get for you guys. If you would like a personal reading, feel free to check out my services. The links are in the information box just below the video. And I will see you in, in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, so if you selected group number three, then we have, for the month of May, we have the koala spirit. So when I think of like the koala bear, I also kind of think about slowing down, okay? It is about kind of assessing the way of life, okay? Because the koala bear, when I think of them, you know, they are so cute and they are so cuddly and they kind of just cling to things, right? They cling, they, I mean, from my you know, from what I observe of koalas, they're, they're usually quite like gentle little beings, right? They sit, they eat their, their little leaves and they just kind of like perch, right? They just perch. And I feel like with, I mean, the card reads, spirit has a plan, okay? And so I feel like for the month of May, what it is that you're really being told to do or to kind of embody is a sense of chill, okay? To chill out to relax, to take a seat, to pause, okay? To not be in a rush. I feel like the word patience really comes to mind when thinking about the koala spirit, right? It's about having patience. It's about having acceptance for the here and for the now, okay? It isn't about kind of trying to push yourself forward or push yourself here or there, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, these aren't pandas, okay? These are a lot more kind of zen creatures, I would say. And so for the month of May, you're being told to practice the art of zen. Now, what's interesting is that the theme of the month is the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is the queen that doesn't take shit. Like, she just, she doesn't take anything. You know, she's the queen that is all about truth and justice. You know, she's the queen that if she sees something... She's not gonna just take your word for it or believe everything that you have to say. She wants to find out the facts for herself. The only person that she really trusts is herself, you know? And so this Queen of Swords would be like Elizabeth I, you know, making up her own rules, defying what is set as a standard for her. Notice how her focus is literally in the direction of the star. She has a vision, she has a dream, and she's not going to let anyone kind of stand in her way. You know, the Queen of Swords is a mental card, okay? It's mental, it's intellectual, it's a thinking, it's, it's thinking, right? She's going to tear down any doubts or any concerns or anything like that. She's a very active, you know, engaging queen. 
you know, out of all of the queens, I would say she's quite engaging. But she's not like the uh, like the Queen of Wands that's, you know, popular and fun and very much with the people. Okay, she's the queen that can be ruthless. You know, she will, in I guess, ensure that certain laws and certain things, you know, by her standards are, are on par. And this is all in the direction of what it is that you want, the star card, right? The star card is the dream, it's the wish, it's the opportunity that's coming your way. And with the sun card, this could also be in correlation to career. This could be in correlation to success, you know, as well as health. And I feel like health is important to mention when we talk about the koala, you know, because if you're rushing and you're pushing and you know, you're forcing, you know, how can a queen rule, especially like things like Queen Elizabeth I, okay, you know, she was a queen in a time where queens were not said to be okay to rule, okay, so, you know, this is kind of like, you know, your, anyone who kind of wants to take your throne or push you off would be able to kind of get you, so making sure that you're focused on your own health and your own well-being, partly why I'm mentioning health, now this could be mental health because she is the queen of the mind. Um, it's because we have the lily and the garden. And usually when these two come together, it can correlate with hospitals. Now with the past life relationship, and I mean, she's looking to the future. Like she's all about the future. She's all about where she's going and what she's gonna achieve and what she's gonna be able to do, okay? But there is a need to kind of chill out. There is a need to embody the sun, to just be to just be, to just relax, to just be in that, that state of zen, to not be pushing so hard, okay, um, but yeah, the koala, okay, so I don't know how far the uh, recording got before the camera cut off, um, but in a nutshell, I do feel like it's really important that you're focusing, you know, on yourself a little bit more, you know, I feel like it's about looking at the bigger picture, okay um really putting yourself first for a change and knowing that everything is going to be working itself out you know it really will there is a golden opportunity coming your way there is something that you've been wanting coming your way you are going to be recognized okay but you can't be you know rushing around or forcing or pushing you know this really is a time to just, I guess, focus on your motive, what motivates you. Um, now, I'm not saying for everybody there is going to be any sort of health issues with these two cards down here, you know, but the lily can represent, in some cases, health. Usually the tree um, in the gypsy set of cards represents health for me, but sometimes the lily, when it's next to, um, next to this card, it can sometimes indicate, you know, a health issue, but it can also be an important or very influential, um, you know, business meeting, a work function where you can network, where you can meet people who can help you to get here. You know, again, this card says that spirit has a plan. In terms of love, I feel like there is something that is cropping up this month in regards to maybe a past relationship, maybe old fears, old patterns, old cycles are resurfacing for you over the course of this next month when it comes to your relationships and again knowing that everything that happens this month is happening for a reason because we have the koala spirit okay because you've pulled this card everything is happening for a reason as well as with the star card but the star card is a very aquarian card okay it's about being able to see things from two two points of view okay half of this lady is in the in the water half of it's on land you know there needs to be a perfect blend and I definitely feel like with this card there is a sense of change on the horizon okay especially because 35 uh, 3 plus 5 equals an 8 okay so there is some sort of difficult conversation a conversation that you might not want to have but you need to have it anyway um, but ideally the whole month of May you're going to want to be able to chill and to relax and cut out time for your social life as well over the course of this next month to really reap these these rewards so thank you so much for listening hopefully you can relate if you would like a personal session with me feel free to check out my services down in the information box below and i will see you in the next video thank you so much bye
Okay, so group number four. So if you selected group number four, then we have the rhino. Now, what's interesting is obviously the rhino is a number 50. And 50, I mean, in terms of numerology, fives for me always represent obstacles, challenges that you have to overcome, slight difficulties, the, the kind of things that nobody really wants to kind of deal with, but you know what, they have to be dealt with. In relevance to the zero, the zero is the, the egg, okay, the womb, in regards to something that you're trying to establish or grow or build. So the fact that for me, you guys have picked the rhino, the rhino for me really is um, a creature that really defends its territory. It's so, you know, it's so about its territory. And the thing is, I mean, this card does say overcome any obstacle. And I totally see that. Um, but when we think of the rhino, the rhino can be seen as that, I guess, aggressive creature that kind of charges, right? Um, but I feel like with this card, this card is actually saying that, you know, I mean, it only eats you know, vegetables, like, it's, what would you call that, is it a herbivore, I don't know, but anyway, it doesn't eat meat, it doesn't need to consume meat, and yet it's such a, a force to be reckoned with, right, it's such a force to be reckoned with, and so, if you selected this option, then I don't feel like you have to, you know, um, you, you don't have to be aggressive to uh, kind of get the job done. You don't have to be aggressive or forceful when it comes to whatever obstacle or issue that you, you're, you're kind of facing over the course of May, okay? And there will be slight annoyances because we do have the mouse. And with the bear, the bear kind of makes it so much more than it is in some cases. You know, this is small annoyances that over time make big problems, right? This mouse has eaten the resources. It's ruining the, it's ruining your security, your home, your, your safety. And remember the rhino is super te like, what is the word? Territorial. I, sorry, I can't, I don't even know what's happening. I can't even get my words out, you know, but maybe that can kind of be said for what this is all about. It's kind of like something that has just been eaten on you. What are those little birds? There's like little birds that sit on top of rhinos and apparently they're meant to like eat bugs and remove ticks. But whatever this is, something is pissing you off this month. Now this isn't all doom and gloom. I feel like you have to deal with this. It's kind of like the, the what is that expression? Something that broke the, the camel's back, right? You're just having none of it. Now it can be in relation to perhaps family members. Sometimes when I'm doing readings with the gypsy uh, gypsy cards, the bear that comes through can sometimes be in, re in relation to like important people in your life. It doesn't have to be family, of course. Um, but sometimes this card, I mean, this card comes up for me all the time um, when I'm, you know, pulling cards and it, it's always in relevance to the family, okay? Um, but it doesn't have to be. The, the bear is something that's big and that's important that's being affected or it's being challenged or something is going not wrong with it, but it's kind of like people are putting their two cents. They're getting involved in things that you don't want them to get involved with, right? There's something that is all yours that other people are trying to get involved with. Now, obviously the bear can eat the mouse. You know, bear trumps mouse every single time you are the vibration of the rhino and that pretty much trumps everything right you don't you wouldn't want to get in a fight with a rhino and so i feel like with this card it is about going slow it is about easing into things but with the magician card okay this is the theme of the month the month is all about the magician it's all about manifesting what it is that you want and you have everything that you need to put things right to put things in in alignment with what it is that you want right the magician is the alchemist okay it has everything it needs to make whatever it wants to happen happen but i do feel like the focus this month is a lot on your relationships your one-to-one -one relationships your friendships your commitments your contracts and there has to be some sort of fairness there has to be some sort of duality or equality that's being established here but i feel like the issue with this 
is, I mean, when it comes to love or relationships, we've pulled the card Love Yourself First. And the Love Yourself First card is definitely a card that pretty much says it says, you know, it's, it says it for itself, right? It says your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. This is about you putting yourself first, okay? When it comes to your relationships, you can no longer tolerate something. And that's the thing. And I've done a post on relationships maybe two or three weeks ago about, you know, understanding, you know, the masculine and the feminine energy and how they kind of actually go together. And if you just understand that, that basic concept, that you can have the best relationships of your life. Like, it really is simple. But we human beings make things very complicated, I guess you could say. As the expression goes, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. We come at things from very different angles and very different perspectives, you know. That could stem back way into childhood. But this reading is not about that, okay. Um, this is the focus. Relationships, what you're committed to. What it is that you're defending. What it is that's really got you agitated. Because you can overcome everything. You know, the magician is the alchemist. You can literally pull the rabbit out of the magician's hat if you can see it and believe it okay but I do feel like the advice this month is the knight of pentacles and the knight of pentacles is saying slow and steady wins the race you know in in comparison to all the other knights this knight is holding this precious gem and he is not in a hurry he's moving very slowly in the direction of of this of what he's about to deliver onto wherever it goes right this is of value this means the world to this night this night has to deliver this gem to wherever it's going okay and so you're not going to tolerate people getting in your way you're not going to tolerate people taking the piss out of your generosity out of maybe your your um i mean your resources or whatever it is that they're kind of getting themselves involved within that has actually nothing really to do with them okay so you have to kind of cut something off you have to say no to something in order to actually have this good relationship right it has to be there has to be some sort of boundaries you know both parties have to be happy with the direction of where it's going that direction of where it's going should not be rushed okay it should be slow and steady okay a bit like this it's like a prehistoric animal like it reminds me of dinosaurs okay and if you want something that's long and you know long lasting then you have to take the the, the right kind of procedures you know it's like if you're working a spell or you're doing any form of magic it takes time it's not as easy well it can be i guess for some people but you can't just snap your fingers and there it is it requires actual work you know working magic okay working a spell it's work it's energy it takes time and precision to you know make something happen and i feel like the rhino kind of does i mean it is it kind of is the unicorn of the the animal kingdom you know and you can have that you can have whatever it is that you want you just have to do it in the right way. And I feel like there could be other people, maybe family members that get involved with your relationships, your commitments, whatever it is that you're, you've got going on, but you have to kind of overcome that, you know? And yes, you can be very, I mean, I almost kind of feel like with the rhino spirit, what, what do they say? I think they call like a group of rhinos a crash. Don't hold me on that. I think I heard it on a documentary once. Um, but yeah, rhinos, you know, a group of rhinos could be a crash. And so it's that classic thing, right? When all of the family members come together, of course, there's going to be impending chaos, right? All sorts of things kind of come up. And before you know it, you know, there's arguments left, right and center. And so I feel like if you selected this option, it could be time for you to kind of really reestablish some sort of boundaries and, um, you know, really put yourself first with what it is that you want, okay? What it is that you want. So thank you so much for listening to me. If you would like a personal reading, feel free to check out my services. All links are in the information box below. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.